About five to seven-ish months again, I decided to hang out with my ex-wife to see how things were going. A foolish mistake that I chose to partake in. I meet up with her at night time and I drive around town. I had a feeling that I shouldn't be around her due to the obvious reason as to why I divorced her in the first place. But my human mentality and maintaining a relationship took over. There were three warnings, I guess you could say, that happened throughout the night. I would like your thoughts, interpretation or explanation on this strange night. I'd gotten pulled over because my lights weren't on. I haven't gotten pulled over in about three years since this experience. The officer, being a kind man as well, informed me that my tail lights weren't on. I gave him a surprised expression and said, huh, that's weird, because from what my switch here is telling me, they should be on. He raised his eyebrow, walked to the back of my car, came back and said, surprisingly, they're on now. I didn't touch my car's light switch at all. They were supposedly on the entire time from when I started my car, like 30 minutes prior to this. The officer apologised for the misunderstanding and bid me a good night. Nice guy. We were driving around on the country back roads and ended up in a small town. I wanted to park and chill because the cop experience weirded me out a little. I pulled into the parking lots of an older church and drove all the way in the back as no other cop would pull in and question me. I parked in the back and turned my car off. Me and her started conversing. About 20 minutes into the conversation, we both noticed that the street lamp in front of us was flickering at an odd pattern. The lamp would flicker violently for a couple of seconds and fade in and out of brightness before being shut off. We looked at each other confused. The lamp next to that one had shut off, repeated the same pattern but backwards. It faded in and out of brightness, flickered violently and then shut off. A sense of dread and doom filled the atmosphere around us. I turned my car on and slowly drove out of the parking lot. When I turned into the main road and began to drive away, I glanced over to my rear view mirror and saw that the two lampposts turned back on simultaneously. Coming from the old church, we drove back to the city that I had gotten pulled over in. I parked in front of a closed coastal Mexican food restaurant. We started talking and the atmosphere in the vehicle got hot and heavy. She wanted to make out and made the first move. Me being me, I didn't decline this offer. We started to make out. I told her to get in the back. She did and I followed. As things were on the verge of getting far from just a simple makeout session, as clear as day, we both heard a loud, intense and heavy growl from what seemed like a beast coming from the rear passenger side of my car. The growl vibrated the vehicle from what it felt like. We stop, sharing an expression of fear towards one another. I hear a disembodied voice say, tell her to leave. I get out and investigate around the car. Me and her are the only living things out here. I tell her we need to leave and the night is over. I drive her back to her car and we go our separate ways. I later found out that my ex-wife had been using black magic on me for years and had been paying witches to manipulate my emotions and beliefs as a result to continue staying with her and seeing her when I shouldn't be. My personal belief is that my guardian angel or whatever being was trying to warn me and alert me to not see this woman again. Me being stubborn as hell and or having my judgement clouded by dark forces didn't listen until it became obvious. A whole ass different level of craziness. So, what are your thoughts on this? Mine was when I was 16 years old, March 18th. I'm 44 now. I was asleep in my bed in the dark. Suddenly, I woke up because someone called me. Immediately, I recognised my grandmother. I couldn't see anything in the darkness, but I knew it was her. She said she loved me and she had died. She had to leave. Suddenly, I started crying. I got up, stumbled around until I reached the door and opened it. It was daybreak, with a very faint glow in the lightening of the hallway that the door opened to. I sat down on the pavement of the hallway, crying for what felt like forever. In truth... It was less than 20 minutes. The phone started to ring. My sister got up, walked by me, looked at me and said, Why the heck are you crying? Then ignored me and went to answer the phone. I heard, 
I will go call her now. My sister enters my parents' bedroom, which was right in front of me in the hallway, and mom comes out. She looks at me with surprise, doesn't say a word and goes to the telephone, which is ahead in the entry area at the end of the hallway. I hear, when and how did it happen? At this point, everyone is up and about. Everyone saw me sitting there crying on the floor. I heard mom saying her mom, my grandma, died 20 minutes prior and her aunt had just called to give the news. At this point, everyone knows I knew she passed before the phone call, but no one says a thing. Everyone swipes it under the rug, acting as if nothing happened to me. I'm crying for hours. No one will believe what I say, even though they all witnessed it as it happened. I can see a couple types of shadow people with my own eyes. The first time happened when I was with a friend. She's also sensitive. It was late evening and we were on a street which usually is busy, but at that time of day is fully emptied. She was driving. I was on the seat next to her and another friend was in the back. Suddenly, I see the shadow zap super fast in front of us crossing the road. It was shaped as a human, but completely black, no see-through. We all were laughing and chatting and making loud jokes. Suddenly, I shut up. She shuts up and stops the car right there and then. We both look left and then we realise we both saw that we look at each other and simultaneously say, Did you see that? The person in the back, which also was looking forward as we did, saw nothing. Same spot, some time later, I was walking back home and I saw it again, but this time I was standing next to the streetlight. My friend and I did some digging and found out some months prior that a boy died at that intersection in a motorbike accident, which still made waves because of some controversies. Earthbound spirit, we wondered. Fast forward a few years and I met a few times a different kind of shadow people. I'm not sure what it is, but I call them leeches. Why? Every time I saw them, they were hovering behind or next to a living person, like they were attached to them. I thought I was losing it, but this event that happened once at a friend's home made me rethink it. She was a woman with a lot, and I mean a lot, of unresolved anger. The type that are hyenas to everyone but their friends. We're at her house, a total of four people. Three female, one male. We had dinner. We were sitting in the kitchen having drinks and snacks. We were telling funny stories and we were laughing loudly. You know those situations where you laugh so much that tears form in your eyes? Well, I'm there, talking with my girlfriend I mentioned. She's sitting at the head of the table, alone, and I see this perfectly formed human-shaped shadow, fully black, dark and perfectly defined. The thing is bent on her right shoulder, looking forward, listening. And I felt this sudden ice in my veins. I had a sudden fit of nausea and my guts felt like twisted in my belly. I kept looking in a state of shock and the thing, when it realised I could see it, jumped back. I could feel its surprise that I could see it and in a fast, sudden, instant whoosh it disappeared. Run away so fast all I saw was a black whooshing blob for an instant. I was telling a joke but suddenly I shut up. Imagine the scene. Three people that were loudly laughing suddenly and simultaneously are looking at me with a terror-struck face, all asking, what? What did you see? They said my face suddenly turned grey. They saw the blood wash down my face. I was petrified. Each one of them was directly looking at me since I was the one speaking when this happened. I explained to them what I saw. The friend went silent and she said that an uncle of hers saw something similar not long prior but she was laying on the couch and her uncle saw a dark shadow hovering over her. Once I calmed down, I realised three things. The shadow felt as if it was feeding off my friend's energy, hence why I call them leeches. My friend's extremely negative attitude was fuelled by this shadow thingy. The shadow was scared that I could see it, was surprised of it, and ran for its life away from me. In 2006-07, I had a huge change in my life. One of those things, 
those pivotal decisions that create a shift in reality. I lived in Italy where I was born. I dumped my boyfriend of eight years. I met my now husband, which I married a year later. I moved to the United States. I had two kids while living my whole life until then, 31 years, with the certainty I didn't want kids ever. Around 2015 or 2016, I had the most crazy lucid dream I have ever had in my life. At that point in this reality, I had two little kids. I was overweight, still dealing with losing baby fat. I had copper brown hair, about the top of my shoulder length. Changed my fashion from black widow to hippie, happy-go-lucky, spiritualist chick. In the dream, I was in this house which I couldn't recognise. Literally in the dream I told myself, where the hell am I? I looked around me and there were a bunch of people partying, eating snacks, smoking pot, drinking beer and wine. I recognised the infamous ex and a friend of ours with his girlfriend, not the others. I kept looking around and I found a large mirror hanging on a wall. I went to it and saw my own reflection on it. Yes, it was me, but as skinny as I was when I broke up with him pre-children. Long, dark, black, blue hair. My old black wings. Eye makeup and dark, cherry lips. Dressed in black. I wasn't seeing the dream with my own eyes, but I was there. I felt trapped inside my body, which wasn't my body. Somewhere with people I knew, but not really. And I thought, this is not my life. I have two kids, I'm married. I realised in the dream that I went somewhere else. And this wasn't a dream really. This place was real. It existed somewhere. Those people laughed. I could hear them and it was loud. The clinking of the glasses was very real. The sunlight on my skin felt warm. The bright room was blinding my eyes. Mind me, though all this I was sleeping. This was the first and last time I ever saw myself in a dream in the reflection of a mirror through my own eyes. Usually, I either see but don't have a body, or it was like it's watching a movie of myself as a spectator of my own body interacting in the dream. What I see and lucid dreaming are two different entities. In this dream, it was me. I was inside that version of me. I woke up from it feeling incredibly uneasy. I ran to check on my kids to make sure they all were there. When I realised I was back to my reality, I had this huge sense of relief, because the other alternate reality I saw was ugly. I felt how that made me feel, and it wasn't pretty at all. I'm convinced I did astral projection of some sort, and I entered an alternate reality, seeing how things would have been if I didn't leave my Italian ex. My son is nine years old, and he's always been sensitive to energies and spirits. He's able to see how energy changes colour too. This past year, we're struggling with these shadows. When I asked him to describe them to me, he said they're small. They move incredibly fast in every direction. They don't interact with him. He stated, it's like they can't see me, but I see them. They feel frustrated. Now, I myself about all Claire's more or less. Some stronger than others. I have a 100% accurate radar of creepy, dangerous or annoying energy. Whatever it is, a simple pissed off spirit or something way lower in the scale. I can't sense those shadows. I don't feel my radar go crazy. But my son is really scared of them. He says there are so many. For the past few months, we've had a long ritual before bedtime. First, I set a UV light in his room. UV lights don't allow a safe, energetic vibration for ghosts to manifest. We do the energy bubble. It's a grounding and protection exercise I do, where I breathe in and out and dip into the universal life force. I call in the flow from the source. I let it pass through my body and I create a shield all around the house. Fun fact, I often change the energy I call in, whatever is needed. Healing is green. Protection is blue. Comfort is purple. My son, nine times out of ten, tells me the right colour I produced. Second step is the sigil of protection we make on his third eye, using an oil made with Solomon seal root, which seals off all evil. The same sigil I reproduced in a magnet I handmade, and he stuck it right above his head. He has a bunk bed. 
Third, I got him a St. Benedict medal, which he rubs every night before going to sleep. Patron protector against evil, used in Catholic exorcism too. Sometimes, the shadows are so prominent that all this is not enough, and I have to use my own energy to blast them. This is a last resort, though because it's depleting for me. After I use my own energy, he says a lot of orbs appear in place of the shadows. Have any of you ever seen or heard of the shadows? Note, I am able to not only feel, but also see with my own eyes the shadow people. This house is shielded in ways you all cannot even fathom. I'm a holistic healer, a crystal healer, a reiki healer, an earth witch, and I dab in pranic healing. I never before heard of the shadows he mentioned. Be warned that I never taught my son any of this. Just recently, I taught him breathing exercise to calm his anxiety with strange stuff happening to him. And of course, the ritual we do nightly and why. But I kept both my kids well separated from my spiritual activities. My most prominent theory, dimensions. Since he also sees orbs which are manifestations of spirits of different nature, my best guess is that these shadows might either be remnants of a lower dimension or visible through the veil presences from another reality. But my guess is as right of, as any of you all could have. My husband and I live on a farm of about 100 acres and raise cattle. It's a family farm. My dad grew up here and my grandpa lived and worked this land until the day he died. I'm familiar with every inch and have never felt scared walking the farm or the surrounding land. A few months ago, one of our cattle disappeared. She had a calf. And if you're unfamiliar with cattle, it's pretty strange for a cow to leave her calf. Depending on the cow, of course. Our farm is in the Appalachian foothills in Kentucky, so there were quite a few hollers. We figured that the cow went down into a holler, died in the brush somewhere, or got out into a neighbor's field. My husband looked and looked but never found her, never found a body, never found any evidence of that cow. The day she went missing, there were some strange spots in the grass of the field, where it was all laid down like something had smashed it and, oddly enough, Two vehicles ran out of gas right near those weird spots. I thought it was just a weird spooky coincidence. Until today. Today, my favourite cow went missing. My husband, sister and I spent approximately five hours searching for this cow. We combed every inch of the fields. We searched the hollers. We checked the neighbour's fields. No sign of her. She also had a calf and was a notoriously good mama, and the calf is still here. I figured she got out into a neighbouring cornfield, or perhaps someone stole her, which would have been weird because she was an older cow and was the only missing cow. Until I experienced the strangest thing that makes me think maybe it is supernatural. My sister and I were looking out for the missing cow around 6.30 or 7pm. And between two of our fields, there's a piece of land that we don't own. There's just in between two of the fields we do own. It's mostly wooded and bordered with a barbed wire fence. I knew our cows sometimes crossed over, so I wanted to search there. My sister and I are both in our late twenties and grew up running wild in the woods. We hunted, climbed waterfalls, dodged snakes, pulled ticks off ourselves. Nothing scared us then and nothing scares us now. I crossed over the barbed wire to go look for the cow, and my sister stopped, which is weird. She's my younger sister and always follows me. I was teasing her, calling her a chicken, and telling her I'd been there before, and that I wouldn't take her anywhere dangerous, and that she knows that. She kept stalling, and I finally got short with her and yelled at her to come on. She crossed the barbed wire, but kept stopping. Finally, she caught up to me. But as I walked further into the woods, I got a bad feeling. The only way I can describe it is dark. My sister also kept saying she couldn't hear me, even though I was talking loudly and was only two feet away from her at the most. I finally stopped, turned around, and we booked it out of there. Once we crossed back over the barbed wire, the bad feeling went away. 
My sister went home a couple hours later because she was unusually tired. I texted her and asked her if she thought the woods felt off. She says that she was terrified the entire time. I'll quote her text now. It was like we were going down a dark path to nowhere. I like to explore, but it didn't feel right. It gives me chills and almost makes me cry thinking about it. So I just told myself I was psyching myself out. It was right when we passed the fence, like we were somewhere we shouldn't have been. I was actually scared. I trust you and everything, of course, but the feeling I got standing and looking into the woods was just telling me not to go, not to cross the fence. The farther we went, the worse it got like a dark shadow or something screaming at my insides, telling me to go back. Afterwards, I got a heavy feeling, making me so tired. This all happened this evening. We never found the cow or any sign of her. I also have this horrible lingering feeling from being in those woods. I feel dread when I think about it. I'm exhausted and I'm jumpy. I wanted to recount this story somewhere so I wouldn't forget the details and to see if anyone had any similar experiences or thoughts on what might be happening, supernatural or otherwise. I can tell you, I've never felt anything like that in my entire life, and my sister is never scared, which scared me even more. I always knew that my little Leia was different. She was always knew how people felt and what they were trying to say without them saying anything. She's been in touch with the energy of everything around her for so long that after a while, I just grew used to it. But then one day, her father passed away. She was only four at the time and she was sleeping when I got the news, so I didn't tell her anything. I didn't even say anything until the week was done so that my oldest had a weekend to think before going back to school. So for days, I didn't say a thing. Even then, all my girls that were too small to understand death, I just said he got into an accident. The day of his funeral, my daughter gave me a drawing to give to her father, since she knew I was going to see him somehow. I said, of course, I'll be back after seeing Papa. We're in a bilingual family, and she, uh, I know. Then she says how much pain he was in. I was shocked and asked what she meant. She completely described all the damage his body got. He died in a skidoo accident. She said how his tibia broke, his back broke, he smashed his head. His glasses exploded in his face. His lips were bleeding and it was coughing up blood. There could be more, but that's what I remember. I was shocked and said I don't think it was that bad. Months later, I got the coroner's report and she was dead. Every little detail she got right. I started to cry. Did my daughter see what happened? Did her father visit her? How could this four-year-old know so much? Was someone in her body? Still to this day, this story gives me the creeps. And I'll never forget that day when she was able to say everything with a smile on her face. My dad was a great dude. He was the heart and soul of our family. He was diagnosed with cancer in 2009 and passed away a few days before Christmas 2018. He rarely missed a day of work throughout the many surgeries, chemo and radiation. Anyway, I've struggled with addiction my entire life. Started with pills and such and ended up a full-blown IV heroin slash cocaine addict. My dad never gave up on me and was hell-bent on straightening me up. A few months prior to his death, I went off the deep end again and lost my job and got myself in a bad way. When I came home and saw the shape he was in, it broke my heart because I knew he wasn't going to be here much longer. I immediately checked myself into detox Halloween 2018 and have been sober since. Now on to my story. My mum and I are living in the house he actually passed away in. For the first year or more, nothing happened. But in the last year or so, there have been some really strange occurrences that anyone who knew my dad would attribute to him. At first, it was just the televisions cutting off and on and stuff that can easily be written off. My mum and I even started jokingly saying, cut it out, dad, every time something happened. Then it was his alarm clock, which made us really give it a second thought due to the fact that he was the most organised and punctual man you'd ever meet. He was an hour early to everything. 
Also, the blinds on our back door are open every morning. Even though we keep them closed or else our other dog will stay there looking in and whimpering all night. Every day I tell mum to quit opening the blinds and shut them. And every morning they're open again. My dad used to do the same. When my sister and I were in high school, my dad would come into our rooms every morning on weekends and open our blinds to make us get up. Finally, once we started to acknowledge the things happening, a timer that my dad used to teach my niece how long to brush her teeth every night when she was a child, she'll be 14 in May, went off in the middle of the night. It had been at least six or seven years since it had been used and took us forever to find it. It had been set to 10 minutes and was powered by a single AAA battery. It's not a scary thing, it's actually kind of comforting. It's just the way the things are befitting of dad so much. My sister and mom always say, if anyone could have figured out a way to hang around and make sure I act right, it's dad. Brings me some sense of solace in the fact that maybe he can see that I've gotten my shit together and this is his way of acknowledging it. There have been many other instances in the last few months and in researching, I read that when a lot of emotion is in a room where someone passes, it can cause a spirit to linger. When dad passed, there were probably 40 family members all gathered when he took his last breath. I was in freshman year of high school when one of my friends asked if I wanted to go to Florida with him and his family. We went, and the first half of the day was fine at the resorts, until me and my friend went back to the condo. So a quick view of the condo. The front door was at the front left corner of the condo and to the condo from inside the condo and to the right of the door was the kitchen and mine and my friend's room. In front of the kitchen and door was the living room. On the same side my room is in the condo but on the other end is my friend's mom's and little brother's room. Now onto the paranormal stuff. I was sitting on my bed facing the door looking into the living room. I saw a male teen or early 20s, in red swim trunks. I remember he was white and had short blonde hair. He walked from the kitchen area to my friend's mom's room. I was shocked but kind of felt fun seeing a ghost. Later that night before bed, me and my friend witnessed some stuff get dragged. A pair of earbuds was on the center of the drawer by my bed and a pillow got pushed from the center of my friend's bed onto the floor. The next morning we woke up to every drawer in my room and the bathroom inside my room, forgot to mention that, and in the kitchen, was pulled open, including the bathroom door, the closet door, and our room door, which was locked. Later that night, or the night after, my friend went to ask his mom a question in her room, and when he walked by, the couch he saw a black, human-shaped lump on the couch. He thought it was his brother, so he kept walking. When he went into his mom's room, he found out his brother was taking a shower in her bathroom. He was freaked out for 30 or so minutes and wouldn't tell me what he saw, but he told me after a while. I don't remember anything else happening after that. It was a fun ride hanging out with that ghost. I have a bunch of other paranormal stories that are as wild as that one. This happened when I was approximately nine years old. I was at my grandmother's house along with her and my cousin. Just the three of us. There was no one else. I was lying down in the same room as my cousin, but we slept in separate beds. My grandmother was sleeping in her own bedroom. It was approximately midnight. For some strange reason, I couldn't fall asleep, but my cousin was already asleep. In that, I hear the singing of a woman in the living room. She also appeared to be wearing a white dress. I didn't see her face and only saw her partially. After a few seconds, she disappeared and the bathroom light, which was next to our room, suddenly turned on and then turned off. My cousin woke up suddenly and he told me that he listened to her too. We were in shock until we decided to leave our room to see what was happening. I went to my grandmother's room and she seemed to be completely asleep in her pyjamas and she didn't seem to have gotten up. My cousin went to check the bathroom and he said there was nothing. We also checked the living room and the kitchen and there was nothing and no one. The strangest thing of all is that this woman had the same tone of voice as my grandmother. But as I mentioned earlier, my grandmother was sleeping in her room and didn't seem to have gotten up. 
She also has very heavy sleep, and it's extremely rare for her to get up at midnight. Also, as far as I remember, she didn't have any white dresses. For starters, she never wears dresses. My cousin and I were very, very surprised by this. We decided to go to sleep. The next morning, we didn't say anything to my grandmother, mainly so as not to scare her since she lived alone back then. However, we seriously asked if she had gotten up at midnight. She said no, that she was deeply asleep. With the passage of time, and until now, I'm currently 20 years old, I keep thinking about it. This is the only unusual experience that has happened to me, for now. I live with my parents and older brother. I get up for the day around 12 or 1am every day. No one else gets up until around 7am at the earliest, usually later. Since no one else is up, I'm very careful about being quiet and turning lights off. To the point that I double and triple check that yes, I physically flipped the switch. The light went off, no more light. This occurs in almost every room, but mainly our small hallway bathroom. I go in, turn the light off, make damn sure it's off, no other light is on in the house either. I'll walk back out less than five minutes later. The bathroom light is on. Every morning, usually multiple times. Same deal with pictures either swinging or falling off the wall. No one is ever even awake besides me and I'm nowhere near the pictures. Same with dishes in our drying rack. My house is small, but I'll be standing in my living room roughly 12 feet away from the dish rack and it just rattles super loud. Not a little bit. I'm talking a ton of noise and commotion and movement, and occasionally a spoon or fork will actually fall out from the force of the rattling. These occurrences usually aren't connected to 3am, the witching hour, or dead time or whatever. They happen then too, but it's not exclusive to 3am. For a little background, the house was built in, I believe, 1984, and I'm pretty sure no one has died in it. We also have one room that freaks all of us out, just super unsettling to be in there like you're being watched or something, and none of any of the animals we've ever owned have ever gone in there. They refuse and freak out if you try to carry them in. We pretty much just don't go in there. It's my dad's office now, but until recently, he had to work home due to COVID. No one ever really went in like ever. We each have a bedroom and the living room and kitchen are connected by just a big open space. If anyone has any suggestions about what might be causing these occurrences, or has had similar experiences, please let me know. I've lived in this house roughly 17 years, and this has always happened, but it's happening much more frequently and much more intensely lately. I'm wondering why that is. Chuck Hin was believed to appear as a young virgin with 150 centimetre long hair. The goddess, infuriated at her exile to the outhouse by the supreme deity Chon Ji Wang and kitchen goddess Zhou Angxing, was said to spend time by counting all her hair. The goddess was believed to appear in the three days containing the number six. Koreans avoided the outhouse in these three days in order not to accidentally provoke her rage. Thus, Koreans held Jesus, or rituals, to her in the 6th, 16th, and 26th days in the lunar calendar, or when a shoe or a child fell in the pit toilet. Jesus was also done for when a pig contracted disease and died, when a prophecy warned of the anger of the goddess, or when the outhouse was built. In the Jesus, dedicated to Shukshing, Koreans put all ingredients possible inside a teo, which was called the tong teo, meaning dung rice cake. The Tong Taeyak was then served to the goddess. Non-gluttonous rice was also served. She was regarded to be the most dangerous of the Gashnin. She was believed to despise children, possibly because of her downfall by the child Nokti singing si, uh, and toppled them into the pit toilet. When children fell into the pit, it was believed that they would die before reaching maturity unless a Jezza was done to appease the goddess. If anyone entered the outhouse without coughing three times, Chuck Hin was believed to use her long hair to attack the intruder. When the hair of Shukshin touched the skin of the intruder, 
the intruder grew sick and died. Even a mudang or shaman could not appease the goddess if she attacked a person with her hair. She was believed to embody a strip of cloth or white paper on the outhouse ceiling. She was also believed to be the deity of legal punishment, following the orders of the house deity, Song Dushin. No guts or shamanistic rituals were held to dedicate Shukshin, unlike the many guts and bone pulis, biographies of deities, dedicated to the other Gashin. This was because it was believed that Chukshin was an evil and malevolent deity, unlike the other Gashin. Because of the conflict between Zhuang Shin and Shukshin in Korea, it was taboo to bring anything from the outhouse into the kitchen, and vice versa. Let me start off by saying that this happened when I was 13 years old. I'm now 30. My great-grandpa was in the beginning stages of Alzheimer's when she came to live with my grandma, her biological daughter, and her son-in-law, my grandpa. I'm very close with both my grandpa and my grandma, and was very close with my great-grandma. I remember being excited when I found out that she was coming to live with my grandparents, but I didn't fully understand the reason why. I would see her most every day, and we would be talking and she would forget who I was. It would forget to speak English and start speaking to me in Spanish, which I didn't understand. This is when I was told what was going on. Fast forward a few months, and we were at the dinner table. Great grandma was eating her food, as was everyone else. And out of nowhere, she said, I love you baby so much. I'm really going to miss you when I leave. Of course, we all told her not to say such things and that she was going to be all right. Not long after that, I stayed the night at my grandparents' house. My cousin and myself slept in one room, my grandparents in another, and great-grandma in the room across from ours. That night, I had a dream or vision, I don't know. But I know it was great-grandma telling me that she was leaving us. I was looking through the eyes of my grandma, who was looking at me, leaning over the bed with my head on my great-grandma's chest, to see if she was breathing. I saw myself lean over the bed while I was looking through my grandma's eyes, standing in the doorway. That's when I woke up to my grandma shaking me frantically, saying, I think grandmama is dead. I shot out of the bed and ran into the room to see her lifeless. And just like I saw in my dream and vision, I leaned over the bed and put my head on her chest to listen for any signs of breathing. And when I looked over at the doorway, grandma was standing in the exact location where I was looking through her eyes, looking at me. I don't know why or how I saw this. I feel as if this may have happened because we all had this strong connection. My great-grandma, grandma and myself. Or because she wanted to let me know she was going. I'm not sure. Either way, it still kind of haunts me and I miss her terribly. There are times when I'll randomly smell her perfume, which is comforting. And I feel like she's around me. This experience happened about six years ago. I was dog sitting for a family of my then girlfriend's family for some extra money. I would go over to their house once in the morning and once in the evening to feed the dog and walk it around the backyard on a leash to do its business. It was a smaller dog, one of those that seems to overcompensate for its size by trying to be big, bad and scary, barking at everything with no fear. I was doing this for a solid week. On the second to last night I was over there I was walking the dog in the backyard as usual. It was fairly dark by that time, not pitch black, but dark enough that you couldn't comfortably walk around without a light. The moon was out, so that helped a bit, but I also had my phone's flashlight on. The backyard wasn't fenced, hence the leash, and it was probably a good 15 feet of flat ground before it became thick, tall, grassy weed type fo foliage. Behind that was just woods. The dog always took a long time sniffing around every damn weed, rock, what have you. Then it suddenly froze, as if too scared to move a muscle. At the same time, I heard a rustling maybe 20 feet ahead of me and to my right. I shined my phone's flashlight over in the direction, but it was obviously not helpful. The rustling grew louder, but did not sound like it was getting closer to me. Finally, I started seeing the tall, grassy foliage start to move, and then I saw something emerge from it. 
Its size was similar to that of an adult black bear, but it was covered in skin that was whitish in colour. It wasn't filled out or bulbous like a bear, but seemed rather lean instead. Imagine a large white gorilla, but with no hair, hunched down on its front arms and legs. It didn't make any grunting or growling noises, and somehow it looked like it was moving in slow motion. The dog, which would normally bark at anything, started to whimper. At this point, my eyes had started adjusting to the dim light, and I saw the thing turn its head toward me. I don't believe I had a face. I ran back to the house with that dog so fast, I would have beaten Usain Bolt. The next day, I went out with an actual flashlight, but nothing out of the ordinary happened. First of all, let me start off by saying I usually don't believe in evil spirits and being haunted by one. However, I've had such creepy encounters in my sleep that I felt like this is the right place to share. The past couple of years, one or two years, I haven't had that good of an experience with sleep. I visited a small town in Italy with two of my best friends, who happened to be a couple, this past summer. Of course, they slept in a double bed, while I slept on a convertible sofa in another room. Our accommodation was, to our surprise, located on top of a mountain, far, far away from the town we initially wanted to stay in. I'd say about a 15 or 20 minute bus ride, and the bus only drove three times a day. That was a huge disappointment, but not really part of the story. Since we were located on top of this mountain, right along the main road where vehicles passed very seldomly, I tended to feel uneasy during the night time, especially since I slept alone and we rented a holiday apartment, not a hotel with many other people or something of that sort. The first night, I only got a little bit of sleep, also of poor quality, but that was only because the sofa was a bit uncomfortable. On the second night, however, I woke up once in the middle of the night, only to see a tall and slim outline of a person standing right at the foot of my bed, staring at me. Since I was so flustered and still tired, I didn't really process what was happening, pulled up my blanket over my head and continued sleeping. The next morning, I realised what happened overnight and I was petrified. I told my two friends at the breakfast table and of course they called bullshit. I insisted that I knew what I saw and I persuaded them to let me sleep in their bed for the next night, which was no problem since their bed was huge. The next night rolls around and my best friend's boyfriend falls asleep relatively quickly. However, my bestie and I were still up for 10 or 20 minutes, talking and whispering, trying not to wake her boyfriend up. Then we hear what sounds like someone putting keys in our front door and entering the hallway. We both were convinced there was a person in our apartment walking around the kitchen and living room where my sofa was located. We both froze and I initially thought we were going to die that night since I've always had sketchy vibes ever since we first arrived. We woke up the third party only for him to tell us to go back to sleep which we did. The next morning it turns out that there's another family staying in the apartment right below us and a possible explanation would be that they entered their apartment yesterday night but the both of us genuinely believed that there was someone in our apartment casually walking around. On another not so pleasant occasion, I went to sleep normally in my bed a few months ago, when I suddenly woke up in the middle of the night, only to find that I couldn't move my body, my limbs were numb, I couldn't turn my head, I couldn't speak, I felt completely paralysed. I've had sleep paralysis before, so I knew that this was just another night of bad sleep. However, this time, it was different. I saw my dad turning on the light and walking around in the hallways, passing my room, which isn't unusual, probably to get a glass of water or go to the toilet. I desperately and unsuccessfully tried calling out for him, but of course, nothing but a whisper came out of my mouth. At that moment, I felt so helpless. My dad got what he needed, turned off the lights and went back to bed. And the moment he switched off the light, I saw a dark and tiny creature or blob of shadow sitting on my desktop chair and staring at me. I didn't know what it was. I didn't know what it wanted from me. All of a sudden, this shadow jumps up, runs right up to me on the side of my bed, then jumps onto my bed, only to repeatedly hop from one side of my pillow to the other. I felt so scared and terrorised in that moment, but I guess that terror finally woke me up and I could move again. The shadow was gone. I turned on the light and had to walk around my room for a few minutes, 
just to return to reality and collect myself. I've had many similar events to this one, but none were as horrible. After that night, I was afraid to go to bed for a couple of weeks. On December 25th, 2021, my mom entered the stage of life called active dying. Her skin was cold, her breathing laboured, it reminded me of a fish out of water, and she was completely unresponsive. My family and I spent our last hours with her alive. My father called the hospice to bring an oxygen machine, and we went to bed around 1am. During that time we spent in the living room, these walkie-talkies started going off as if someone pressed buttons on the other line. No speaking, just the static sound. My dad brought them out weeks prior so that my mom could use them if she needed him at night, since she slept in the living room and my dad was sleeping in their bedroom. Anyways, the walkie-talkies were making these noises randomly in the middle of the night, but I won't chalk it up to being paranormal, even if it didn't make sense they would go off at the time. The creepy thing happens a few days later. My dad is going through my mom's phone to tell people who were texting her what had happened and stuff like that. He comes across a call to my brother made at 1.25am on the 26th, right after we'd gone to sleep. She was in an unresponsive state. She couldn't have called anyone. We don't think she even had a phone near her while she was dying. It was probably in her purse since she had, we had just driven home from a trip. To do that, she'd have to get up to find her phone, when she could hardly breathe, let alone walk, and do it quietly enough to not wake up my dad who was sleeping on the couch. I doubt that my dad could have slept through her doing that since he would have just gone to sleep. He hadn't been sleeping well for that week because any noise she would make, he would get up to make sure she was fine. I doubt that night it would have been any different. Also, it would make sense that if she were to call anyone, it would be my brother since my phone is broken and my sister doesn't use hers. So either she got up while she was dying and made a phone call to my brother, or she was already dead when she made it. Either situation freaks me out when I think about it. Aside from wondering how this happened, I also wonder what would happen if my brother had answered the call. So as a kid, and just generally growing up in that house until moving away when I was in middle school, I did occasionally from time to time hear voices. Where I'd hear the voices varied from the house itself to the garage that was next to the house. I didn't really think much of it until I brought this up to my sister, and she told me she once saw a spirit in the house. She remembers once seeing a reflection of someone in my older brother's bedroom window. This window was on the second floor, so we know for sure it wasn't just some guy in the distance. She described this reflection as a bearded man in his mid-thirties. He had a little bit of a gut, but it wasn't like he was obese. He just seemed a little fat, and his outfit seemed fairly normal. She told me he wore a flannel shirt with jeans, so this spirit just looked like a lumberjack. So after swapping these stories, we decided to go to our parents about this. And let's just say, they had something to say about it. So when my parents bought that house, it really needed to be worked on and repaired, because the people that used to own it haven't actually lived or just looked after it in a long, long time. So they actually worked on repairing and just repairing the house for the first year they got it. My parents weren't all on their own when they were working on the house. They had a friend with the exact physical description. And when we asked what happened to this guy, my parents told both of us that he actually hung himself in the garage when they were close to being finished with fixing the house. So our story starts in Maine, in a neighbourhood reasonably close to Portland. I was up there to visit family pretty much, and the house in question belonged to one of my aunts. And I was with my aunt from Boston, who wanted to drive up to visit them too. We showed up at the house, and I was just told that the house was already pretty old when my other aunt's family moved in. And that's the most I know about the history of the house. I might ask later, because it sounds interesting. So we come in, settle down in the guest rooms, and we all start talking about the trip so far. And I make a joke about my outfit saying, oh yeah, I look like I'm a Salem lesbian. We all have a laugh, and I soon forget about that comment. 
We jump to that night and occasionally throughout the night I hear scratching on the door. I wasn't that concerned yet, mainly because my aunt's family had a dog and a cat. But most of the time when I got up to let them in, the hallway was empty. Now at first I wasn't worried. I was used to hearing scratches before the trip because I just have a generally needy cat. So to clear my mind before bed, I decided to take a shower. But when I got out of the shower and I settled in, I heard my cousin walk to the bathroom and loudly say, ah, damn, forgot to turn the light off. And from that moment, I knew something was up. Next night, pretty normal, though I did still keep hearing the scratching. So I decided to go downstairs to grab a glass of water. But as soon as I was gonna head back to the room, I heard a very clear yet feminine, you're not allowed to do that, in my ear. And after a moment of confusion, I was kind of just happy I was leaving the next day. Me and my sister were now in a room playing and my parents were in the TV room. Father was watching TV and mom was in the kitchen area. It was fine when suddenly my sister saw a white translucent being with a beard and a grin on his face leaving our bathroom which was inside our room and moving to the TV lounge. My sister called me as I was facing backwards to the bathroom. I didn't clearly see the whole figure, just a white piece of clothing at the brink of our door, so I didn't completely believe her. After five or ten minutes, my father started choking very badly and the creature returned to our room. This time I left the room earlier, but my sister was there. The creature this time made very evil loud laughter that I heard and my sister then ran out of the room after hearing that. My father, after this laughter, after choking badly, fainted, and mom was outside calling the ambulance on the phone. It's been years. Everything's fine now. My parents are still unaware of any creature or a sound. But if it was only me or my sister alone, I could call it imagination. But we both at different places heard it and saw it, although I saw just a part of the creature's clothes. We changed our room after that and never used the bathroom. I did use it sometimes in daylight, but nothing happened. After we left home, the room and bathroom were not in use, just during monthly cleaning. One day, my mother told us that while they opened the room, there were hundreds of lizards on the walls. So many that the wall was barely visible and all in a blink of an eye rushed in a small hole outside like there was nothing before. While growing up, there were things that I saw that could be in a horror movie. In elementary school, my friends and I saw a dead cat look like a dog and got a hold of it, so we buried it in the backyard. The next day, what did we see? The same cat in a ravaged looking state, walking by the gate, and it started menacingly before disappearing, never to be seen again. Could be a coincidence or mistaken identity, so let me explain the other occurrences. There was a door in the dining room that always, and I repeat always, was closed properly, but it always opened by itself. You could slam the door, check the door, lock the door, but it always opened as if someone slowly entered the room. In high school, I recalled using the desktop in the front room, reading after I learned about Nostradamus. After doing so, I showed my older brother and cousin. My brother sat in front of the monitor while my cousin and I were to the side. Suddenly, as we reached the part where it said that his use of the occult led to him predicting his soul go to hell, there was a black disembodied arm that rested on the table. And in shock, my cousin and myself said, do you see that? Then without saying initially at the same time, we said the arm and decided to close the website. Now as we get deeper into the things that happen, there was a friend of my brother who needed a place to stay, so she was invited for a while. Ironically, the same things I just typed I said to her, and she said that in school on the island, they played with a Ouija board and the participants saw a witch who was haunting them. I thought nothing of it and felt she was telling a tall tale, but strange things started happening. I can't say if it was the house I lived in or maybe something that was up with me, but when she came, it was as if her energy I could have felt. It started with me hearing voices similar to relatives who for a fact were not there at 3am in the morning. To see more things like shadow figures and even spirits. I always told people if I see a spirit, it was a slight white while being translucent. 
but I always saw a full figure with details. Then suddenly I'm being bothered by a presence when I'm by myself. It was like a deep growling, like some sort of beast in my ear, and I always had to break free and it led to insomnia. My sister and myself even saw while my mother was in the kitchen cooking a large thing, and I'll do my best to describe it. It was huge, at least over six feet, walked on hooves, bulky wax looking skin, and a face with hair that reminded me of the predator. It got really bad, to the point where I had to get prayed over and anointed with oil. That night, after the pray prayers as I lay in bed, the thing came to bother me, but it slammed up against a barrier that was solid white, and I found peace. For a while, that is. Nearly five years ago when I was 16, my dad and I went on vacation around Christmas to Boulder, Colorado. We rented this little house pretty far out of town in the mountains. It was located in the sort of ravine or meadow in between two tall, steep mountains and had a medium-sized stream running right in front of it. It seemed like a really neat house when we were just looking online at it because one side was completely made of glass and was isolated in the forest. When the first night came and everything still seemed all right, I brought my little dog along and of course he needed to pee in the middle of the night. I was kind of spooked at the idea of going outside at 1am, but more because I was afraid of bears or cougars or whatever. I tried to wake my dad up, but he had taken some sleeping pills and literally refused to wake up. I put on my coat and everything and went outside with my dog. I had a high powered flashlight and as I was walking out to the yard, I was sort of scanning the light along the edge of the valley. I saw something across the creek that I wasn't expecting. There was a man standing out there. I froze for a minute, then like a total idiot, I yelled, who's there? I really just thought it may have been, I don't know. At the moment I thought it was like a night ice fisherman. I didn't get scared until he didn't answer. And by then I started to notice some weird things about him. It was freezing like probably minus 10 Fahrenheit at least, but this man wasn't wearing a coat. It was like I couldn't see any details about him, almost like he was a solid shadow, even though I was close enough and the light was bright enough to see the trees behind him in detail. I was shining this super bright light right into his face, but he wasn't recoiling whatsoever or putting his hands to cover his eyes or anything. Also, the longer I looked at him, the weirder he seemed. He didn't seem to be moving at all, like not even shifting his shoulders to breathe or anything. He looked to be average height and build, but the other weird thing? At first I thought he was wearing a face mask, like the kind people wear when they go skiing, but this mask covered his entire head. As if the entire face was one smooth black surface. He was certainly facing me though, I wasn't looking at him from the back. The longer I stood there the more scared I got until I sprinted back inside, yanking my little dog behind me. I could still clearly see him through the glass side of the house and I was very alarmed to see what he had swiveled. He had sort of smoothly tracked my movement into the house, but it didn't seem like he had moved his feet or anything. I ran upstairs and tried again to wake up my dad. I told him there was a man standing outside the house. He sort of shuffled over to the window, saw him, but said it was probably a druggie and went back to sleep. I probably should have called 911, but my dad didn't seem concerned. I thought he would get mad if I caused a stir about it, so I didn't do anything. I did watch the man though, all night. The man stood in the exact same place for hours, never moving, not even seeming to breathe. He didn't seem phased whatsoever by the extreme temperature. He just seemed to stare right at me and I stared back. At one point I looked away and when I came back to the window, I was shocked to see that he was gone. An odd movement grabbed my attention though. This is the bit that I find the hardest to describe or explain. He seemed to be glitching. He was behind a big tree, so I couldn't really make out a lot. But over and over, I kept seeing his arm and let it come out from behind the tree, then smoothly slid back to a normal standing position. It really looked like a video game character glitching, but in real life. At some point I dozed off, and when the sun came up, he had disappeared. It was such a bizarre experience because I wasn't sure if it was real. It just didn't seem like the quintessential ghost or Slenderman or whatever, so I didn't know what to make of it. 
My dad reconfirmed, though, the next day, that he had definitely seen the man, so I at least wasn't hallucinating. I also walked across the bridge to where the man was standing, in the daylight, of course, and there were not any footprints or any other confirming evidence that the man was there at all. It all continues to be one of my most significant paranormal experiences I've ever had. I've lived in the same house since I was four, and I'm currently 20. The bathroom adjacent to my bedroom is the kids' bathroom, and appears to have been since the house was built in the 40s. It's also funny because when we moved in, we remodelled some parts of the house, including that bathroom. It's all white, with white tile and granite and bright lighting, which doesn't really seem to fit with the fact that a ghost haunts it. The first time I ever experienced anything really scary in that bathroom was when I was around eight. I was taking a bath and I was alone. I was just chilling, reading a book or whatever, when I heard a girl's voice inside the bathtub. Like, it sounded like it came from directly above me, as if the ghost was hovering a few inches above me in the bath. It said hello several times, and I was terrified. At first I was frozen, then I absolutely hightailed it out of there. After that, I hated the bathroom near my room. I refused to even enter it for at least a month and had to go all the way downstairs to go to the bathroom and shower and I brushed my teeth in the kitchen sink. Well, nothing much else really happened for many years after that. It wasn't until I was much older, probably around 13 or so, that things started happening there again. The next run-in with this ghost was by far the worst. I was alone at night. My mom was out on a date. It wasn't a big deal and I was used to it so I wasn't already scared or freaked out. I was hanging out in my room, and I had my dog sitting next to me. The door to my room was open. I wasn't paying any attention, listening to music and playing a game or something, when my dog jumped up and looked at the door. I followed his gaze and saw a dark figure at the door. It was at child height and appeared to be a little girl. She had black hair that was dripping wet, and the rest of her face looked to be dark grey. She was peering around the corner of the door so that I could only see her head. As soon as I saw her, she ran down the hallway and stairs. I could hear her running. It didn't occur to me whatsoever that it was a ghost at the time. The fact that both the dog and I could see her, then I could hear her running down the hallway, made me think it was an intruder. I was so scared that it also didn't register that the intruder was a small girl. I just thought that there was someone else in the house. It felt like lightning was coursing through my body. I ran into the bathroom and hid myself in a cabinet, then called the police. The police came and searched the entire house and had to come pull me out of the cabinet. But they said they didn't find anything. In fact, the house alarm was still on when they arrived, which meant that none of the doors or windows had been opened since my mum left. Not a week after this incident, another thing happened. I was standing in the bathroom washing my face. I got a strong feeling something was behind me but ignored it, thinking it was just because my eyes were closed. Out of nowhere I was, well, almost like possessed. I lost consciousness for a moment and it was as if I were taken to a different place. It was like an empty black space with nothing, anywhere. The floor was made of water and I was soaking wet. In the distance there were these glowing purple lights. Then I heard a voice. It was the same voice that I heard in the bathtub years ago, but this time it was in my head, not out loud. It said the name Lucy, over and over. Then I woke up, and I was on the floor of the bathroom. It was so strange. It was like I'd been on some spiritual journey or something. I suddenly knew things about this ghost. I knew it was a child. I knew her name. Like, I knew instinctively that Lucy was her name. I knew that she died in that bathroom, and I knew that she was friendly but lonely, but she wanted me to know about her and her death, but didn't actually mean to scare me. I wasn't freaked out really, it was more relieving to find out what all these events were, or that she wasn't an evil spirit or anything. I tried to run and tell my mom what had just happened, who thought I was being crazy about the whole thing, and was still angry that I messed up her date a week earlier by calling the police when nobody was actually in the house. But she definitely thought I was just acting like a loon, and I mean, who wouldn't think that? Since then, the bathroom is still 100% haunted. 
Recently, I got a new dog, and every single night she jumps off the bed, walks into the bathroom where the bathtub is, and just stands there for several minutes, and then leaves. My dog also frequently jumps up to stare at the bathroom as if she heard a noise, when I can't hear anything. It's also pretty common for things to move on their own in there. Just the other day, I saw all of my products and things on the counter just fly sideways, as if someone swept their arm across the counter. And one day, a stack of boxes in the closet toppled down as if they were kicked. None of these things ever scare me though. The ghost and I kind of just coexist. I never feel afraid of the ghost when she does things in there, which I reckon was kind of her goal. I know who she is, sometimes I speak to her, and I let her carry on her haunting without any issues. Also, I'm pretty sure she and my dog are friends, which is honestly really cute.